But for real though, um, we're going to go over some comic books that we are ordering, some things right. that we want to get as well. And this is important for the comic fan because this stuff happens quick. You know, a lot of members are like, oh, snap. I just miss out on everything. I and have then people you go, as a comic shop employee. I work there behind the counter every Wednesday. And I have somebody, I have multiple people who come in there every single week who don't have a pull list there. I know them. I recognize them, which takes a lot for me because I'm dumb. Right. But they come in every single week. They don't have a pull list. So they're just rolling the dice and hoping the book they're looking for is still going to be there. Oh, the you can't do that. You can't roll the dice. All right, I, know, I know personally, even some of the books like Casual Fling and stuff that we talked about, we don't order like extra copies to put on the wall. Like we just, because it's you know, low interest, I guess, on an indie sure. book like that. So we only order copies for the people who requested it. Yeah. If you ever wonder why you can't find a comic book at a shop, it's because there's upwards of 80 to 100 titles that come out every damn week. And right. if you bought one or five of each of them, do the math and you don't sell them out, you end up with what a lot of stores end up with, which is piles and piles of comics that can't sell. And then they go out of business and then, then it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. Not so, good. so what you can do is pick up your comics, right? Right. That's step one. Step one is pick, pick up, up your comics. What you order. Actually, it's not even step one. First step is to, is to support your LCS. Sure. So we're going to remind everybody before I tell you, you know, some options here. If you need to be able to get comic books and you don't have an LCS, do a Google search. Pull up your Google Maps. Type in comic store. Comic store, right? right? And and go to that comic store. Now, if you have had troubles at your LCS, give them another shot. Give them a third shot. Things happen. Now, if you find yourself not happy like you're it's just not working out. if it's not working out you're not going to be reading comics you're not going to be doing any of this stuff if, if you don't find a new store and or your store is nowhere nearby or not in the city or not in the state and you need another resource you can actually get a shelf at our comic store now it's not my store it's not ryan's store you work there I work, it's my store. That's where I get my comics. That's where I get my comics too. So we're is, talking about, oh, it's, we, we don't, own we, it. we don't own it. It's sure. like, you know, we're yeah. not like hyping our own, like our own we're not store. Own the deed. Yeah. 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 You know, it's not our business, right? This is Russ Bright, the LCS owner, the Overstreet Price Guide advisor. You know him from the trending comics on this book that there we no go. list was every on. single week. Um, and he has a pull list and the way that he has structured this so that he can serve the most amount of people who need his store, $10 on Patreon. Every month, it gets you free shipping. It gets you free shipping. It also gets you a 10% discount. We did not mention that last time. That's right. 10% discount. Every every person who has a pull list at Mill Geek gets a 10% discount on whatever they buy. That's right. And also, everything comes bagged and boarded, which That's is right. kind of like a no-brainer for anything you ship. Don't ship raw books. Like, put them in a bag and board. Right. But even people who walk in off the street, and buy, even people who don't have a pull list, everything we do at Mill Geek is bagged and boarded. That's right. And you can sign up by going to the Patreon link in the description, or you can go to millgeekcomics.com and then hit the Patreon link there. What will happen soon after is you'll get an email from Ryan, and he's going to give you the account set up. There's a handful of different ways you order comics. You know, the OG way is emailing by, you know, like one title at a time. But we have other ways for you. And we're going to actually show you one of the big ways that you can order most of your comic books from, and this is a, a way you'll be able to do it once you sign up. And please order your comics because that's how you miss them if you don't, you know? So here we go. Uh, we're going to show you some books that we're excited about. Um, the first one is Gideon Falls, getting a hardcover edition. I only read through issue six. Right. I think that was read, the first trade. I read the first trade as well. So this is a, a fun one that we put on here because, you know, first off, Jeff Lemire, you, you know him from um, Sweet Tooth. A lot sure. of people are, are getting hyped about Sweet Tooth. He's done a lot of great stuff. He's going to be writing another um, Silver Coin. Silver Coin. He's going to be on that. We just talked about that today. But this is a really fun uh, this, this book horror. Is over. Yeah. It's, it's over, right? It's over and done. It's Gideon over and Falls done. finished a, a several months ago. That's this right. This is one of those books. I read the first trade. I closed it. I immediately knew I need to own this in a delicious, delicious hardcover. Yeah. Like, I can't keep going on trades on this. I don't want to even put it on my pull list. I haven't touched this book since I read the first trade. So I was waiting for this moment for the hardcover collection of Gideon Falls, which is going to drop in September. Absolutely. Everything in this catalog is uh, July or later. Like That's some right. hardcovers are solicited even further in advance, but all the single issues are coming out sometime in July. Notice it says here, this will be in shop September 15th. So if you want to get your hands on this in advance, you need to make sure that you order it and technically you're pre-ordering it by doing right. this, so telling the shop that you want it so it can come in so you can go and pick it up. So the shop knows how many to order for their shop. Otherwise you're going in on a wing and a prayer, hoping that they're just going to have an extra one because maybe the shop ordered one or two. 
For example, the Department of Truth trade paperback recently came out. I did not pre-order that because I already had the single issues. I didn't think about it, but I realized I want my friends to read this, so I'm going to get the trade and give it to my friends. I do that a lot, too. The trade doesn't exist. Like, it did not. You can't find it. It was so... I bought, I bought, I think, two copies for right? myself. It flew I, off the shelves yep. that first week. And then it wasn't until later when the hype kind of died down on the trade that right. they started to restock everywhere. So if you know something really popular is going to get collected like this, it's not a bad idea to pre-order. All right, take a look at this next one. Me, You, Love, In the Dark, number one. That is a title. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a weird one. But here's the thing. Scotty Young. Cool. All right. And... We also have George Corona. This is the same team who did Middle West. Middle West. We talked about that on weekly polls last year, dude. Middle West. How damn good was that? Sh- was that? Uh, <laughs> it was a great comic. I loved Middle West, dude. Middle West was so damn good, and um, that's the only reason why I'm. I don't even like. You Honestly, know, yeah, that it, was it sounds really, really good. The art is going to be great because. Uh, cause is this George or Jorge? I can't remember. Um, I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I but, default to Jorge, but, but he's so good, man. Like yeah. Middle West, it, it was like, one of the cool things about Middle West is that there were clearly things that it's like, there isn't enough time for Scotty Young to tell the artist how many things he needs to draw in a particular panel. Like the, the, the writer, he'll have his things that he's going to say. Sure. He's going to be like, yo, we're, this is going to be open plane. He's going to stand far away. There's a lot of technology in the area. There's a red barn or whatever. You know what I mean? There's all these things that are happening in the, in the, in the picture that's going to be drawn. However, there was in Middle West, there are pages where it's like you can get lost with how many things there are. And it never gets discussed. There's parts of this world in the technology right. and in the Detail. scenery, these details that are like, oh, wow, that looks crazy. This mechanics over here and what this does. I wonder what that does. Why is it like this? And it's never explained. It doesn't good, need to be he's explained. He's a good world builder. He builds the Visually. world. Visually. Like a lot of, a lot of world That's building him. happens in the script, like in, in the plot. But like Ho- George, Jorge Corona, either one, uh, all of the world building that happens visually there is, is something that doesn't usually go down in comics. Absolutely. doesn't matter. The creative team was all I needed to know to get on this. Yep. It's only five issues. It also says down at the bottom, fans of Stephen King and Neil Gaiman. That's right. And you know, we love both of those creators. And the next one on the list right here. Oh, man, Ooh. I'm hyped okay. about this, dude. This is crazy. So I explained this one because the way that it's coming out is also unique. Like the actual style in which this is going to be released. It looks like it's going to be one of those like book landscape formats. Like is what it says. Yeah, landscape. Like, like this left... Um, this left spine right here. Like, I actually think this is gonna be the 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 way you open it up. It's like left to right. Like the book is whole. The whole book is like sideways. Yeah, yeah, just like that. They have seen comics like that. It's, okay. it's interesting. That's but new to me. It'll make but... sense um, once we show you some of these pictures because this is the same creative team. Um, who is it? It's a uh, William J H Williams and Hayden Blackman and Dave Stewart. The art, the artists on here. The creative team is the same people that did Batwoman in the New Fifty Two. So we're gonna actually um, pull up some Batwoman for you guys because holy smokes, if you guys didn't know. Look at this. I, I I knew this book was supposed to be good. I honestly, ha- I'm, a, I'm a big New 52 fan, and I have not dabbled in Batwoman yet. And as I- soon as I saw the names on this, I was like, oh, I know exactly what they're talking about. This um, because awesome. this is, in, in Batwoman, the, there are at least, I think in the first issue at least, there's like six or seven different two-page spreads that look just like this. They're just like, it's incredible. Just like her really coming on the scene, the it's such moody imagery. The layouts, the energy. The layout. I mean, there's so much happening. You right. know, like the planning for something like this is crazy. You have to, you just know you're dealing with someone at the. This is a different kind of comic. This is not what every single comic book looks like. They don't normally get this much effort and work put into them. This is all from issue one, right? right. So I knew exactly what they're talking about when they said that, yeah, there's going to be. Oh my God. I know, right? Look how. F- oh, excuse me. I just swore. <laughs> oh my God. How freaking awesome this is. Whoopsies. <laughs> it happens, comic fam. All right. But for real though, I don't think I've ever sworn on the mic. I don't, that, that, that just came bad. out of my mouth. It was bad. That's how much you love this That's art. That's how much I love this art. It just <laughs> comes right fam. out of you. Whoopsie daisy. Okay. Okay, but, but for real, Echo Lands, this one right here is so damn good because this right here has the same creative team and they're already hyping how it's going to be in that landscape. Pretty crazy. I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to try this creative team. This, that's all I needed to know, really. It was like, it's, a, it's an image number one, which is usually not that much of a gamble. Like image is pretty solid. And I like to try number ones. Most of these books that we're going to highlight today, I think are either number ones or like the Gideon Falls, like a, like a hardcover collection of something. It says here, a landscape format, mythic 
fiction epic where anything is possible. All right, here we go. Moving on to the next one. I, I have to get this, man. You know, I, I haven't read enough of Kang recently. Me neither. And I'm a big fan of Kang the Conqueror. I have him on a t-shirt, and I have not read enough. A t-shirt that was sent in by the comic fan. Dude, it's the origin of Kang the Conqueror. I mean, this is going to be a short... Um, what is it? Five, five issues. issues. Yeah, five issues. It's going to start in August. Kang the Conqueror. Marvel's been doing this a lot lately with like five, six issue. They did like an Iron Fist series. There's a uh, Black Knight series. There was a MODOK series that just finished. Like kind of standalone. That Taskmaster one. Like I've been getting all of them. They've honestly been varying degrees of fun. The Taskmaster one and the Iron Fist. Not I so really, much. yeah, I like Taskmaster. You did. I didn't I, finish you know, it. I didn't like the ending, but I did like the you know the, you know the more path than me. to get there. I never finished it. Just his whole you know the thing I loved about Taskmaster, even though we're not here to talk about it, is that he has this like he's just like petrified of Black Widow <laughs> the whole time. He's like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to deal with Black Widow. So it's just so much fun to see him kick so much ass, and then as soon as. Natasha's in the you know in the scene. It's like oh, oh my god! I, I finally have the whole thing. I'm gonna go back and read that. You but gotta this read is, it, man. This is five issues, so yeah. like I'm I'm down to lock in for all five. Everyone's been Kang the Conqueror. Like that's the thing. Kang is he's just his his relationship with time. He's a time traveler. Is so interesting, and it means that like so much so many narratives can be form formulated around this character. That and it's an origin story, which yeah, is something yeah. that appeals to me. Like, I, I don't know much about Kang, so hopefully this is actually an origin story. Now, could this be because Jonathan Majors is slated to play Kang that they're like, you know what, we should probably do some Kang stuff? That's a good idea. That would explain Loki's just around why the they corner. did the Taskmaster one and why they did the Black Knight one. You know, maybe now sense. that's almost like they planned it that way. All right, here we go. Next one on the list right here. Um, Black Panther... Um, this one's going to be, they're restarting the story, yeah? Like, Black this is going to be a the, new series. The, the current creative team on Black Panther with Tanisi Coates as the writer just ended this week. Right. Final issue with just a ended. bunch of variants. It's a pretty cool Peach Momoka one, by the way. I don't normally say that, but that was a, it's a pretty cool Peach Momoka variant. This is going to be the relaunched Black Panther starting in August, written by uh, John Ridley, who's doing a lot over at DC. He's writing the next Batman, like the Future State book. Look at this freaking Alex Ross cover. Uh, Hot damn. That's pretty. Hot damn. Damn, comic fam. Holy smokes. Look at that panther on the top left. Look at it. Black Panther just like chilling that. on the world. Just like crouching with his claws looking I see damn cool. Get, the Dorja Malahe just right over there. Come on. Just everything you need. Storm. Storm. That's all I see. Is that Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider? Yeah, on the top right? The yeah, other Avengers. Yeah, the another, yeah, the Avengers, Avengers over here. You have a, you know, She-Hulk and Thor and Blade blade and everybody it's a packed image this is alex ross doing what he does man i the alex ross cover got me i had to get that hey, butch. oh my gosh all right let's let's give a big uh hello to comic butch he decided to wake up he was sleeping next to me there's nothing i can do comic fam this cat sometimes wants to be on the show sometimes he doesn't cat and butt. when he wants to be on the show and show his cat butt he's gonna do it shout out Let's Shout keep it going. Boots. Next one on the list here, we're going to show off another book. Uh, so let's just keep it going. Next one on the list here, we got, oh, that's right. This one's weird, dude. Avengers Tech on number one. So Jim Zub, he's going to be writing a story where he basically ironizes all the Avengers. Everyone's going to get a suit. It's kind of a cool concept. Like, like at first when I saw this, I was like, oh, weird. They just did that Aven Avengers mech book or something where they all had mech suits. Yeah, they were, like, taking everybody to the future. The 2099 like suits, too. Kaiju like, that happened stuff. a year ago. A yeah, year ago. Like, so, like, they did the kaiju stuff, and now it's just, like, straight on Tony Stark style. But this is a story. The solicitation here says that, like, Red Skull somehow takes everyone's powers. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to go to Tony Stark to get, like, it's great. some kind of uh, technology-based <laughs> powers. What's up, dude? Come over here, dude. Just, oh. ch just chill <laughs> over here, man. Let Ryan talk about Avengers oh, tech. So. It's important. This is another mini series, though. This is a six issue thing. Yeah. So it's not that much of a of a commitment, I guess. You're signing up for a, a six issue story. Right. I might try this. I don't. I don't know for sure. I'm still. I'm still debating it. You know, oh, I'm my, gonna read it for sure. My pull list is getting pretty it's over, getting pretty overwhelming. <laughs> so I might wait for like a trade on that one. All right. So um, this next comic book on the list is by Al Ewing. And you know that he is actually leaving Immortal Hulk. He is. And he's got, I, don't, I can't imagine this being the only thing he's got planned because it's only a five issue, he's, he's issue writing Guardians. series. Javier Rodriguez, they're going to be doing Defenders. I don't know if he's doing anything other than Guardians of the Galaxy right now in Hulk. You know what, Comic Fam? Game of Flight. He's doing that Game of Flight spinoff. <sighs> I want to be real with the Comic Fam. Uh oh. This is, this is something that happened. I'm, gonna, I'm breaking down. I'm telling you, behind the curtain, Comic Fam, this is something that happened. Al Ewing blocked me on Twitter. Uh-oh. He blocked me. 
What'd you do? I'm not kidding. Why? What did I you do? I have no idea. Is it I, like you got super drunk one day and I didn't? I don't him? do that. I don't do any. I don't even really you just do anything. Forgot what you did? It's or? like all all I can think about is like the forty or fifty times that I talked very highly of all of his work, right. and I'm like, you we, know what? He got tired of me talking about his work and the success of it and the yes. print counts of it and how well it did and how. You know, it's like, I don't know. Like I really like did like a ton of analysis and coverage and reviews of his work. And I don't know. I don't know. But Al Ewing just like said, nope. And he maybe, blocked maybe me. Maybe it's me. Maybe he knows I'm not on Twitter. And he's like, you know what? Just yeah. in case I'm going to block Tom. All right. So it is what it is. Like, you know, I'm not, I am not going you're not, to. You're not like bitter or anything. No. You don't I, have I, any I, hard I, feelings. I There's no hard feelings, man. Because sometimes the, the, the comics, you know, I'm here for the comics. Right. You know, it, it's just, it's just. Anybody can write it. Anybody can write it. How hard is it? Really? It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. No, no, no. But like, hey, you know, I, I guess, I guess it's probably, you know, I'm, I'm assuming. He's probably jealous. I don't think he's jealous. No. I think he doesn't like the, the spec talk. He probably doesn't, you know, th- th- here's the thing. We, we sit by that, that book right there. Wizard Magazine number one. This one. Okay. And we, we definitely chat about how great the Wizard Magazine has been for the collectors and you know, some of the most diehard collectors um, you know, from, from the past even that are, that are still doing it today, they think highly of that magazine and they think of the, the top 10 and then the things that it provides, the, the interviews and such. But I don't want to uh, get it confused that back in the day when Wizard was doing their thing and hyping up certain things over others and just, you know, doing what they were doing, trying to provide value to the community, there were creators that did not have very nice things to say about it. I'm talking... I let, I'll let the comic fam look into it, but type sure. in wizard. I mean, there's, there's, there are a handful of creators. It's probably that, wizard magazine. They don't you might like just get a bunch of Harry Potter images. They don't, maybe right. something worse. They don't like speculators. They don't like people who spend more than cover price on stuff. Now, I, I don't know if that's what Al Ewing has against me. It could just be my logo. It could be because he thinks I, 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 do, I talk too much to my hands. You He's do, like, no, by the way, I side do note. <laughs> talk with my hands. I put you on mute the other day when I watched the gym. Interview. It is just crazy. <laughs> I'm just going over. I kind of want to put it in slow motion. It's like time. those people who um, like scam sign language, you know, on television where no, they, they don't speak know. sign language, but they, they, they pretend they do. And people then they get that? caught. Oh yeah, dude. It's like every year almost you see someone who's like, wow, they're just making it up as they go. It's like, how did they, they're on television. Like how would they, they learn sign caught? language so fast? And uh, <laughs> It's like that. I don't know. Al Ewing, I apologize. This is the weirdest for whatever I did. we've ever been on. This is a tangent, but you know what? Defenders looks cool. <laughs> um, you know what? And you know what? I'm going to also say this too. Uh-oh. I went and I was like, you know what? I wonder if there's anyone else who's blocked me on Twitter. Oh, God. There is another person. Rob but, Liefeld. No, Rob. I thought. Doesn't he block I, people? He does. And I thought for sure. I'm like, oh, Rob's probably blocked me. You like him though. Maybe he blocked me. I don't have Twitter. So I don't, I don't Again. Rob hasn't blocked me. He blocks me. Probably. He hasn't blocked me. I've been, I've been blocked by Al Ewing and someone else. And that, someone else. Donnie Cates. No, I have not been blocked by Donnie Cates. Not yet. He's probably not yet. by you. He's probably any like, day now. Tom guys. He needs to shut the He's a stopped saying my name Sir on the mic. Cates. <laughs> the bad boy of comics. He's the bad boy, not Sir Cates. No. He lost that. Dude. I will not call him Sir Cates anymore. Really? Live here on the mic. Uh-oh. He is no longer Sir Cates Day. He's downgraded. He is. He's not downgraded. Downgraded. To the bad boy. He is the bad boy. That's 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 what that's what he gets. He's the bad boy of comics. Shout out. All right. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, we have. Defenders. Oh my gosh. Where is this? Where is this gone? <laughs> where is this gone? This Al Ewing blocked me. Off the rails. So yeah, Al Ewing blocked me. Here's his comic book. You go pre-order it. You're welcome, Al. All right, here we go. <laughs> we have something Ooh. is killing the children. Ooh. Going to hard freaking cover. Are you kidding me? This thing is going to be this sold is, out. This is long overdue. Like issues one through fifteen. One through 15, this whole this issue yes. sixteen just came out this week. Your variant, by the way, which is which is awesome. Yeah, which we just actually had to take down because we're not taking. We got a lot of damages. I was doing that oh, earlier. Right. Today. We'll, we'll talk about that. That's in, a in different a second. story. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's keep it going. This is the first hardcover collection of Something Is Killing the Children. It is coming out in two different versions of this hardcover. That is something to specifically point out here. This is a time when you want to pre-order something. If there's ever any time to pre-order something, it is this book right here. This is going to be limited. They're only doing this first printing. So however many pre-orders they get for this version of this comic, that's all they're going to make. This is coming in a special slipcase, which is a hard cover that goes over top of the actual comic. Like all of the absolute comics come with a slipcase. That's right. If you're somebody like me who likes big fancy hardcovers, this is the one to get. All right. Well, if you can't afford the extra 10 bucks, it's also a little more or expensive. Or if it sells out, which this is probably going to sell out it soon. Most likely will sell out. 
there is going to be this version of it for everyone else. Right. And it's a little cheaper, but it doesn't have the slip case. It won't be it's as the collectible. Same book, just without the slip case. It's pretty much everyone who just wants to read it. Sure. Know? But that's just another one. Everyone loves uh, uh, um, Erica Slaughter. Come on. I'm so excited for this. I am too, man. I got to get that. All right. Um, this Eat one looks rich. pretty interesting. Um, yes. Um, Eat the Rich, uh, Sarah, what does it say? Gailey? Gailey? Right. Gailey. Yeah. Gailey looks like it. And P.S. Bach. P.S. Bach. And Kevin Tong. Kevin Tong does the covers. All right. So um, this one looks interesting because it's just like a girl who's going up to visit her boyfriend's family in a hometown that's seemingly wealthy and and perfect, except that although it seems ideal, the affluent perfection, what's underneath that is dark, deadly rot. They don't give a lot away. In the the word rot. Yeah, there's something, something creepy. I get like a vampire vibe from this almost. Or maybe they're all Daredevil cosplayers. <laughs> no, I mean, it's right? pretty funny. They're, like, they're all mad <laughs> maybe not cosplayers. Maybe that's what the rot is. <laughs> <laughs> rot. What is this? What is this? <laughs> no, that's probably not what's happening. Is this Boom? This it's is Boom, Boom Studio. This is five Heck issues. Yeah. It's another five issue miniseries. I thought this looked cool. I'm getting this book. I'm hoping it's cool. It says at the bottom, perfect for fans of Stillwater, which is a book I'm really into right now. Stillwater oh and Nailbiter is another one that that's I have right. not read, but that's supposed to be really good. Okay. And then this last one, Not Ooh. All Robots. You know we're going to be chatting about this one, man. I can't wait to read this. This is done by, is this uh, a... Mark Russell. Yeah. But, this is but, done by AWA. AWA. Dude, of course. It's by, they're play. killing it, man. I am AWA big, is just yeah. nonstop fire coming I from that publishing love company. those guys. All right. So this is like everyone gets assigned a robot in their home, and the robot does everything for them in the future. But then like what if the robot's turn into bad robots. I also recently, like today, just watched all of the Matrix movies and the Animatrix. So I'm like in a really big, like robots are going to kill us mood. I'm always in like a robots are going to rise up and kill us all. Battlestar Galactica. Watch Battlestar Galactica. Robots are going to kill us all. So this comic is going to be awesome. Yo. It's also written by Mark Russell. I don't like, yeah. I have recently, I just fin- I just read Billionaire Island, which he wrote. It's hilarious. Like there Mark Russell's a really cool writer. And I'm, I'm really excited for this one. 